Don't you just love CBT nuggets? So we make these micro nuggets and we give them away to the world to educate them and we take your requests. So today I just couldn't wait to make a micro nugget. I looked through the requests and there it was. What the heck is trill? Yeah, exactly what someone wrote. What the heck is trill? We keep hearing about trill. We have no idea what it is. I was thrilled because this is a subject that I'll be teaching in great depth in the upcoming CBT Nugget series on the CCNA Data Center Certification. In this micro nugget though, let me just quickly explain to you what Trill is all about. Now in order to understand Trill, we need to go on a little history lesson. In layer two networks, we had a brilliant woman named Radia Perlman who invented something called spanning tree protocol for these layer two domains. We want redundant paths in the layer two domain and spanning tree protocol was wonderful at the time. It would go in and dynamically block particular links so that there would not be loops in the topology. But spanning tree protocol does have its issues, right? I mean, this is bandwidth that we are paying for, and it is useless, right? It's blocked in this particular topology. So Radia Perlman helped improve spanning tree protocol, and we have today rapid spanning tree protocol and multiple spanning tree protocol. But even with those improvements, there are still scalability issues, admittedly, with the spanning tree protocol. I mean, after all, even in a rapid spanning tree protocol world, we're still going to be wasting bandwidth, if you will, with links that are in a blocking state. So Radia Perlman went back to the drawing board and she created Trill as a replacement technology, not an enhancement, but a replacement technology for all versions of spanning tree protocol. What does Trill stand for? Transparent interconnection of lots of links. <laughs> yeah, lots of links meaning it's a great idea for topologies like data center technologies would be a great example where we're just going to be adding tremendous numbers of nodes and we're going to have all kinds of redundant connectivity. What is the secret behind Trill? It's bringing routing intelligence into what we call the switched fabric. The specific routing intelligence is intermediate system to intermediate system routing. That's right, ISIS, a particular routing protocol that really lost uh, ground compared to the competing technology of OSPF. Yeah, we know that OSPF was adopted heavily by corporations and ISIS has primarily just been relegated to internet service provider usage. Now, ISIS is making a comeback. In fact, vendors like Cisco Systems are starting to add ISIS back to curriculums when they had removed it previously because no one was using it that much. So ISIS is going to be giving the routing intelligence at layer two. Yeah, these devices will literally be routing traffic from switch to switch at layer two. It, you'll often hear people say Trill is MAC address routing, moving traffic from switch to switch using shortest path technology found in ISIS. All of the links are up and active. Yep, there's no blocking with routing at layer two, thanks to Trill. Something else that's being done here is called Equal Cost Multipath, or ECMP. And we can have the ability to load share across all of these equal cost paths. Currently, I think it's about 16 concurrent paths that you could utilize, and this is certainly enough 
for our switch fabric infrastructure. So, amazing, isn't it? Trill, routing intelligence at layer two in order to solve blocking problems we have with spanning tree protocol. Also, by the way, convergence is really, really fast with Trill. We know rapid spanning tree protocol really tried to boost convergence times, but just through its very nature, the convergence is blindingly quick in the Trill technology based on ISIS. Now, before you panic and go out and start studying ISIS really hard, let me give you one more little piece of good news here. The complexities of ISIS you're shielded from. I mean, in advanced troubleshooting scenarios, it would pay to know some ISIS, but it is possible for you to configure an environment with Trill and know nothing about ISIS, really. But again, we don't want to be like that, right? <laughs> but I did want to make the point that this technology does shield you from ISIS configuration. You are not responsible for ISIS configuration when you do Trill. So this is pretty easy stuff, huh? Why all the confusion? Well, let me explain. A very confusing aspect here is that different vendors are implementing Trill in their own variations and renaming the technology as such. For example, Cisco Systems implements a version of Trill with what they flat out say are enhancements to Trill, and their version is called Fabric Path. And obviously, I'll be teaching this intensely in our upcoming CCNA Data Center series here at CBT Nuggets. That series begins July 18th, 2013. Brocade implements Trill, and their version is called VCS. Yeah, VCS technology. And the, the, uh, the switches that they have that implement this VCS Trill technology are called VDX switches. So, pretty confusing as different vendors are implementing Trill with variations and renaming it as such. So to that wonderful student who requested this micro nugget on Trill, thank you so much. And to everyone that's viewed, I hope you've enjoyed this particular look at the next generation of layer two technologies to certainly guard against loops, but do so in a dramatically different manner from spanning tree protocol. And I suppose we should also end this particular micro nugget by thanking the great Radia Perlman. Well, I hope this has been informative for you, and I'd like to thank you for viewing.